Hello, my name is Arnold Schutzer. Today, I will tell you about the paper Locality Sensitive Monitoring Applications to Reliable Spinners. It's a joint work with Pantry. Uh, locality Sensitive Ordering is a collection of orderings, which is simply some permutations over uh, the points of a metric space uh, that will preserve somehow uh, distances. In a sense, it's one way to think about it. It's a projection to a one dimensional line. So let's dive in to the definition. Uh, given the metric space X, a collection sigma of orderings is tau rho LSO, which is abbreviation of local system orderings, if the number of orderings here is at most tau, and for every pair of points X and Y, they appear somewhere in each ordering, there is special ordering sigma such that uh, without loss of generality, X comes before Y, and the points between X and Y in the orderings sigma could be partitioned into a prefix and a suffix, such that all the points in the prefix will be a very small ball around x, and all the points in the suffix will be a very small ball around y. So all the points here between x and y are very close to one of them. And how close? So we have this parameter row, so all the points in this prefix will be a distance, most row times distance between x and y, uh, both of these derivatives. Yeah, so these partitions, all the points are two very small balls. Uh, Chad Harpellet and Jones showed that uh, for every collection of points in the d dimensional Boolean space, one can construct an epsilon to the minus d, epsilon LSO. So the number of orderings is exponential in the dimension, and these epsilons are very small. Uh, they showed a bunch of applications uh, to these uh, LSOs. So one application was dynamic approximation nearest neighbor search. So one can easily see that uh, if you have a point and you have all these orderings, you can check the neighbor to the right and to the left and find an approximation to your nearest neighbor. And they show that you also can maintain dynamically these LSOs. And they show some other applications, uh, bichromatic Lewis pair, uh, dynamic spanners, and uh, Flutterland uh, spanners. And uh, most relevant for today, that we will discuss later, uh, Buchin, Arpel, and Ola show that one can use LSOs to construct reliable spanners. Uh, so in the rest of the talk, we'll discuss uh, LSO's doubling metrics, then we'll discuss the applications to reliable spanners, and uh, lastly, we'll discuss left side LSO, which is a different type of LSOs. So a doubling metric is some generalization of a uh, Euclidean dimension, and we say that the uh, metric space has doubling dimension D if every ball of radius R, like this red ball here, can be covered by at most 2 to the D balls of half the radius. So we have seven balls here. And indeed, this is generalization is every d dimension of the space has doubling dimension asymptotically d. Uh, yeah. Uh, Chan, Harpelet, and Jones in uh, their seminal paper showed that every metric space with doubling dimension d admits an uh, LSO with uh, epsilon log n to the d uh, permutations and uh, parameters here. Uh, so this is uh, unsatisfactory because uh, uh, this dependence on log n. Which is the number of the in the metric space, which generally uh, one like to avoid, and uh, we showed this indeed possible, and uh, in fact we showed that every metric space with double dimension d admits an epsilon to the asymptotic uh, d epsilon LSO. So this is uh, essentially uh, very similar to what they have, and uh, to construct uh, this uh, we used uh, what is called hierarchical separated trees or HSTs. Uh, so. Here, a uh, metric space is called an, an HST if you can map all the points in the metric space into the leaves of some rooted tree T. So here is the rooted tree T, and this is uh, the leaves, which are uh, the points of our metric space are mapped into, and each internal node here has some label. Uh, so here is LA or D, and these labels are monotone. That is LI, small so LD, which is small so LB, small so LA, etc. And the distance between two points uh, will be simply the least common ancestor of the two leaves they associated with. So here, the distance between uh, V4 and say V3 will be this uh, uh, label of this uh, node D, LD, and the distance between V5 and V6 will be the label of uh, LB. This is an HST, and the K HST, it's an HST with an additional requirement that the gap between any two uh, and some further uh, nodes in the labels will be at least k. Yes, yeah, so 
LD should be at least k times smaller than LB, which in part will be also at least k times larger than LB, and etc. Uh, so these are very structured uh, metric spaces, even more structured than trees. And uh, in fact, one can construct a KHST. I mean, given KHST is maximum degree delta, one can construct a, a delta over two, one over K and so. So this is delta over two orderings. And uh, the radius of the ball will be a K fraction of this of the two points. So I'll not discuss how uh, one can construct this, but we use the structure of the HST. And to obtain an uh, LSOs without the metrics, we use this idea of uh, HST coverage. In a sense, the idea is that uh, you take a dumping metric, you take a bunch of uh, HSTs, uh, such that every distance in the dumping metric is approximated by one of these HSTs. And then you will construct an LSO uh, for each HST and take the union, and this union will be an LSO for the W metric. So formally, and we have four parameters here, tau, tau, rho, k, and delta, HSP cover of a metric space X is a collection of tau. So here you have some, this metric space, you have a collection of tau HSPs, each one of them is a k HSP, all of maximum degree delta. And here's the most interesting parameter, rho. We, the, we have the guarantee that for every pair of points X and Y, uh, the rule is some matrix, one, some HST such that the distance between them in the HST will be at most rho times larger than the original distance. So in a sense, all this HST will be dominating. I mean, if you look on this pair x, y, in every HST, the distance between them will be at least as large as the original distance. In at least one of them, the distance will be only rho times larger. And uh, indeed, for a double matrix, one can construct a HST cover when the number of HSTs is epsilon to the D, and the stretch here rho is very small, one plus epsilon, uh, the K here is just one over epsilon, and the maximum degree is again epsilon to the minus D. Uh, so, yeah, and now using this uh, HST cover, uh, because each KHST admits an uh, LSO, uh, we just construct, as I said, uh, LSO for each HST, take the union, and we obtain an uh, LSO for the W matrix. Yeah, and all the parameters here are again small, so uh, the number of uh, orderings will be just epsilon to the minus D, and we have this uh, LSO. So uh, just to say a couple of words about how we construct the HST cover. Uh, so the basic idea is that uh, we have something which we call pairwise partition cover, which is uh, some partition of the space such that the uh, every we would like that every two points uh, at the distance, say, delta, will be contained in a cluster of diameter about one plus epsilon delta. So this, of course, is possible one partition, but we show that given like epsilon to minus d partitions, this is possible uh, to obtain for every pair of points. And then we construct, uh, so this is a cover of partitions or collection of partitions, but then we construct, in a sense, a laminar set of all these partitions uh, such that uh, for every pair of points uh, is kind of satisfied in one of uh, these laminar partitions, and, uh, uh, and this, in a sense, induces the HSTs. So for more details, you can see either a full version of this talk or uh, asking the poster sessions, or of course, just typing the paper. Uh, so next, I would like to discuss reliable standards. So let's begin with the metric T spanner. So this is a metric space X, and a metric spanner is simply a subgraph, or just a graph actually, on these metric points, where uh, the weight of each edge in this graph is, uh, must be the metric distance between the endpoints of the edge. Mm -hmm. And uh, we say that uh, such a spanner has stretch T, if for every pair of points X and Y, uh, the shortest path distance between them in the graph that most t times larger than the metric distance. So here we have these three edges and they defend some, some path and the weight of this path should be at most t times the uh, metric distance. So this is a very well studied notion of a, a spanner. Uh, usually we like to construct a spanner which are sparse, the number of edges is small. Now a new reliability spanner is a very resilient uh, structure that uh, the idea that uh, it should withstand a very uh, massive uh, force. So in a sense, it's similar to F 
uh, full tolerance spinners, but here we don't have the maximum on the number of folds. And I mean, even if 90% of the network fold, you still want to get something remaining, like in the remaining parts should be very well connected. So uh, formally, a mu reliable T spinner of a matrix space X is some graph such that for every type B, so I mean, think of the scenario when uh, you have some network and lots of nodes fall because say some pandemic, they are closed down. And, uh, and the guarantee is there is some set B plus superset B, which are slightly larger, say only one plus mu times the size of B. So there are like some small number of additional nodes that can, will be inactive. And the guarantee is that for every pair of nodes X and Y, which run in the set B plus, the distance between them in the metric kind of the network that you have after you remove all this set B is, is small. And specifically for every pair of points X and Y out of B plus, the distance between them in the uh, spanner after you remove all the sets of B, know that you can uh, uh, use points in B plus which run in B, distance here will be at most three times the original distance. So this is very strong in guarantee. Uh, Buhin, her parallel Ola, show that if a metric space admits a tau epsilon LSO, then for every reliability parameter mu, uh, one can construct a mu reliable one plus epsilon spanner uh, with number of edges being almost linear, times a polynomial number of orderings divided by the reliability parameter. And they use the uh, LSOs of uh, China et al to construct uh, an LSO reliable spanner for Euclidean space, such that uh, the number of edges is a session linear times epsilon to the uh, dimension uh, times a polynomial in the reliability parameter. I know this is uh, very good as for, uh, say, uh, just a frequency spanner without any reliability parameters, the required number of edges will be n times epsilon to the minus d. So the loss here is not significant. And now if you plug in our results for double dimension, uh, you just will get uh, the same type of result, a uh, reliable spanner. For doubling spaces, well, the number of edges is actually exactly the same as in Euclidean spaces. We constructed reliable spanners for Euclidean spaces and doubling metrics. But what about other spaces? Unfortunately, her pilot Ola showed it's hard. And specifically, even for the very basic uniform metric, where all the distances are just one, they show that every new reliable T spanner must have at least n to the one plus one over T edges which is polynomial for every t smaller than log n. That is, to get linear number of edges, one must have stretch log n. I know that uniform metric is also like even trees, HSTs are all can present uniform metric because the metric induced on the list here of this star is just uniform. So to overcome uh, this roadblock, they uh, introduced, actually it was introduced by Buchin and uh, and this notion of oblivious neural level t spanner, which is a relaxation of the notions of reliable spanner, uh, when the guarantee is instead of having a worst case uh, over all the Bs, we get some distribution over spanners and the size of B plus will be bounded only in expectation. So finally, an oblivious new reliable T spanner is a distribution D over spanners H, such that for every attack B, there will be a set B plus H superset, which is a, notice a function of both the attack B and the spinner H sampled from the distribution, such that in expectation, the size of B plus H for every B will be at most one plus mu times the size of B. And uh, the search guarantee will be a worse case. Is for every spanner in the support and every pair of points X, Y out of the set B plus H, the distance between them in the spanner, once you remove the set of B, will be at most T times the original metric space, the original distance. And uh, her pillar, Mendel and Ola, showed that uh, for trees, for example, uh, you can construct oblivious new reliable tree plus epsilon spanner with number of edges being essentially linear times uh, this uh, log square phi, where phi is the aspect ratio, which is the, the, the ratio between the maximum to the minimum distances in the metric space. So this is somewhat a caveat because the aspect ratio a priori is unbounded. So this is to be avoided. Uh, what about this tree plus epsilon? So one observation, is that for every stretch parameter smaller than two, every T spanner of the uniform metric must have quadratic number of edges, even without any reliability requirements. And this is just because for every pair of points here, you must have an edge, because if you don't have an edge, you will go through other edge, through other vertex, and you will get 
distortion at least two. Yeah. So getting below two requires a quadratic number of edges, but they show three plus epsilon. So there is a gap between the lower bound of two to the upper bound of three plus epsilon. Uh, the construction of our pellet owl was based on uh, sparse covers. In a sense, it's the idea of uh, they reduce the problem of constructing a spanner from general metrics to just uniform metrics. And uh, our idea here is to go through LSOs, which in a sense reducing instead of into uniform metrics, reducing to lines, which are more structured and you construct better uh, uh, spanners. Uh, however, the problem is that unclear how to use the original definition of LSO for uniform metric, for example. You cannot get like epsilon balls. And therefore, we come up with this new notion of left-sided LSO, which is uh, somewhat different. So uh, tau rho left-sided LSO is a collection sigma of partial orderings. So originally in LSO, we have orderings over all the metric points. Well, here we will have only partial orderings, such that each point could participate only in the subset of the orderings. And this uh, part, collection of partial orderings is tau rho left sided LSO. If each point x belongs only to tau orderings, so this point x could participate in a subset of most tau orderings. And for every pair of points x and y, there will be some special ordering, uh, such as both participate in the ordering. And for every pair of points x prime and y prime, which come in the order before x and y, so x prime comes before x, y prime comes before y, the distance between them in the metric space will be at most rho times the distance between x and y. And all y can be also to the left here. Uh, so before I explain why this definition is useful, let's just uh, show that you can construct them. And specifically, uh, we will show that uh, every tree admits a log n1 left-sided LSO. And the construction is very simple. So you take a tree, you find a separator, which is a vertex. If you remove it, every connected component will be of size at most half n. And you construct an ordering where the uh, place in the order will be with respect to distances from the separator. So uh, first comes separator, then V2 will be a closed vertex to the separator, V3 is the second closed, and the last one will be the farthest vertex from the separator. So this is the first ordering. Now you delete the separator and, and find the separators in each connected component construct orderings with respect to them, so three different orderings here. Then you remove the separators, remove the singletons, and continue. So this will be the entire uh, set of orderings. So one can observe that each order, uh, each vertex will belong to at most log n orderings, because the sides of each connected component halves each time it participates in orderings. And let's see that we have also the uh, uh, stretch guarantee. So consider a pair of points x and y, and it did v be the unique and first vertex a separator lies lying on their short unique paths actually. Uh, and consider the ordering you constructed with respect to this separator. And take every pair of points x prime and y prime to the left of x and y on this uh, separator. So on this order. So now x prime comes before x, so the distance between x prime to the separator is smaller than distance between x to the separator. Same comes for y prime. And therefore, the distance between x prime and y prime, uh, if you go through the separator, will be smaller than the distance between x and y if you go through the separator. But this is actually the distance between x and y, so we get our promise. Okay, so we finished proving this uh, theorem. And now uh, uh, let me explain how we can use this uh, left sided LSO to construct uh, reliable spanners. So the idea basically when we construct a, a spanner is that uh, we reduced our problem to the line, and now we want to construct a spanner for the line graph. However, in this case of left side LSO, constructing a usual spanner will be uh, useless. And instead, we construct what we call a left-sided spanner. So uh, this is kind of the definition of that. We want also that the spanner will have a small number of edges between every two points. So we find a two-hop left-sided left spanner, H, uh, for the uh, line graph is simply a spanner such that for every pair of points A and B, there will be some point C to the left of them, such that uh, there will be edges between uh, uh, VC to VA and VB to uh, VC. Uh, so this is just if you take a star from the leftmost vertex and satisfy this spanner. Uh, but of course, you want it to be reliable. So a new reliable two hop oblivious uh, left spanner is some distribution of spanners. 
such that for every attack B, there is some uh, superset B plus, which is an expectation with the most one plus mu times the size of B, and such that for every pair of vertices uh, A, B, uh, which are not in the set B plus, there will be some set, uh, matrix C, B, C, in the, which will not be part of the side B, such the edges B, C, B, A, and B, C, B, B, are part of the spanner. And then the idea is that you can go through C, and you will get a, a, a small distance between the A and the B, because uh, you know that this edge will be of uh, weight at most row times this is uh, the A, the B, and say for this, so it'll be at most two row stretch. <coughs> and now you actually can construct uh, two hop left sided spanners uh, with size n log n over the relativity parameter. And now uh, we have this kind of method theorem that shows that if you have a left sided LSO, you can construct a reliable spanner. And the idea to just construct a reliable uh, left sided spanner for each one of these orderings and take the union of everything and you get a reliable spanner for your original metric space. And you lose here some parameters because of this multiplicity. So specifically, we show that a uh, given metric space X that admits a tau row left side del so, uh, you can construct the biggest new reliable two row spanner for a number of edges will be n times tau squared divided by u, the reliability parameter. And this is the number of uh, orderings each vertex participates in. And now, uh, given that uh, each tree admits log n1 left sided LSO, uh, we can construct and we conclude that every tree admits on the previous more reliable two spanner with a number of edges being linear times the reliability parameter. Uh, so now this is tight because you cannot go below two. Uh, yeah, every spanner with stretch smaller than two must have ends for edges. And this is a proof over the three plus epsilon threshold propellant allow. And also we remove the dependence on the aspect ratio. Yeah, so this is about these left-sided spanners. Uh, we also constructed left-sided uh, LSOs for uh, other metric spaces like planar graph, planar free graph, tribute graphs with similar uh, number of orderings. And they all uh, imply a reliable spanners, improving previous results and getting almost uh, tight. So that's it. Let me conclude with some uh, open problems. So uh, the first, I guess, uh, most interesting open problem is about uh, deterministic reliable spanners for uh, general metrics. So Harpel and Al uh, constructed a deterministic reliable uh, T-square spanner with number of edges being, so this is the important parameter, n to the one plus one over T. And the only lower bound is that uh, for stretch T, one must have n to the one plus one over T edges. So this is true even for general, general spanners without any reliability uh, requirements. And the question is, could we close the gap between T and uh, T square? And so T square is the upper bound, T is the lower bound, and, and what is the right number that you can get? What is the right stretch you can get if you want to use n to the one plus one over T edges? Another open question is about planar graphs. So uh, in this work, we show that uh, every planar metric admits a new reliable two plus epsilon spanner with essentially linear number of edges. So we know from these uh, uniform examples that uh, for every t smaller than two, one must have n square edges. And it's uh, interesting to understand if you can get all the way to two, like you get in trees. Or when you go closer to two, the number of edges goes uh, higher. Yeah, so this is the open question. Close the gap between two and two plus epsilon. And finally, uh, the, yes, the most significant question that the homework is leave you is to find more applications for this uh, new and cool uh, tool of uh, locality sense big ordering. That's it. Bye.